Good Monday morning, everybody. Welcome to the WLBB Community Voice Program, our show brought to you by Tanner Health System. It is Monday morning. It's 830. I'm your host, Colin Worthington. We're on the radio, of course, 106.3 FM, AM 1330, streaming live online at News Talk 1330. And this morning, we're on Facebook Live, the uh, News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. You can already see my guests and uh, I'll go ahead and introduce you to them now. Those of you listening on the radio, see on my left is uh, Adam Wilkins. He's president of the Dawnbreakers, Carrollton Dawnbreakers Rotary. Yeah, is that about right? That's about right. Adam Wilkins, president there. <laughs> sitting to my right is a former president. He's old hat, uh, Jay Gill. He's uh, no longer president of the Carrollton Rotary. Has been. Has, has been. been. Recently right. has been. Right, right. Yeah, that was a couple months ago. Yeah. Uh, our guest this morning. Uh, just going to revisit Rotary. I mean, it's not something that we've talked about on this program in a while. And uh, they're uh, they're doing things constantly. You can see posted on Facebook. Uh, had a Don Breakers had a had a big event last week uh, that was very noticed in the community. And uh, Jay says Carrollton Rotary does have a big event that's coming up. A uh, big fundraiser is coming up, and we'll definitely talk about that uh, in this morning's program. Good morning, gentlemen. Thanks for coming out uh, to talk about, the, talk about the Rotary. I guess, first of all, let's differentiate between Dawnbreakers Rotary and Carrollton Rotary. Why, why are there two, and uh, is there a difference in the, in the mission? No, well, you know, just let, me, let me go from the back and, and work my way backwards. But as far as the mission and the uh, – no, our missions are the same. We're all Rotarians. We're all kind of working for the same goal, and uh, that's just to make for a better community. Um, you know, our motto is service above self, and, and that's, that's what we do. Um, look, quick history, the, um, the Rotary Club of Carrollton was actually founded in 1939, mm-hmm. um, and it wasn't until, uh, what was it, about mid-90s that they, yeah. uh, we actually formed the uh, Dawnbreakers Club. We thought there was a need for, um, to expand in our area and, and had a, a different time of day for people to meet, a different day of the week, uh, just to meet people's schedules. Uh, the demand was there. We meet uh, on Tuesdays at noon. And so the um, you guys meet on uh, Wednesday mornings at uh, seven thirty. So you have a breakfast and a lunch club. Uh, so it's just whatever's convenient and works best for you. And that, that's probably the biggest difference in the two clubs. Do they mix members at all, or is there really no benefit to mixing members? You think with that? We have we have several people that they'll do makeups and different things like that. It gives them an option to come to a seven thirty, and maybe they have something going on on a Tuesday at twelve o'clock, and so they'll jump ship and come over to uh to our club and we do the same thing for theirs we'll we'll come to their club every once in a while but for the most part it's uh there's no joint members or anything like that well who are rotarians are they the um I think business leaders i think the majority of them are people who are involved in local businesses yeah i would say i would say the majority are certainly local business people and we have some educators um health care um, entrepreneur attorneys bankers um, utilities um there's a, there's a variety of folks in utilities there. uh clergy so yeah, and you we mentioned that. So I guess tell me about your businesses, Adam. Uh, I think how long have you been here, Adam? In, in Carroll in, County. In Carroll County, about seven or eight years. Mm-hmm. So uh, I graduated to West Georgia, and um, uh, currently I, I well. Why am I, I thinking you're from Missouri? I am from. Is Missouri. that are you a Cardinal yeah, fan? Is I'm that a I'm, okay. diehard St. Louis Cardinal fan. So um, I couldn't looking for my Cubs gear back here. That's what I say. Yeah, you guys, put it you away. Talk baseball I'll, after I'll walk this, out right? of here real quick. No, <laughs> uh, it's no. I, season, it's I, I moved. I moved down here seven or eight years ago, and um, uh, went to West Georgia. Married my wife Emily Payne, which is now Emily Wilkins, obviously. And um, I moved over to Omnicall, which is a local company that um, we basically, it's a team of receptionists that um, answer phones for people during the day, um, after hours, um, just a little bit of everything and kind of just act as a receptionist for that company um, and handle calls that they can't handle. So, How does that work out when, when they're calling and then that number gets transferred? How do they know which uh, business they're working for at that moment? So without going into too many details. I we, want to know all the details. We, <laughs> get, we give you a, a, a number. Um, a separate number and then you take your phone and forward it to that number well the number that we originally gave you is programmed into the computer system that we have to where whenever that number pops up it pops up the account mm. so then they looked at it on their piece of paper and says okay well i'm working for bob's builders right now yep so and it'll pop up originally it'll pop up a uh, answer phrase thank you for calling or it's a happy day here at whatever, and uh, and so everybody has their own. It's completely customizable, so you can do whatever you want to do, and we can answer whatever questions they have. And and then uh, the main thing is we get the messages over at the end of the call, however you want. So yeah, you yeah get them yeah, to the actual business. We can do texting, calling, emailing, anything you want. So business is all right. 
What's that? Business is all right. Business, so. business is good. Yep. This cat's in a business which is doing all right as well, and uh, don't see them going away anytime soon. Carol MC, uh, the, the promotions great. manager, vice president yeah. of marketing and direction, and <laughs> yeah, communications, economic development. Uh, so we, uh, uh, of course, the utility. You know, we've been here since 1936. Um, you know, we serve um, collectively. The MCs serve about 76 percent of the land mass. Uh, you know, whether it be in a region or across the whole state of Georgia. And, um, you know, we um, provide electricity. We're a distribution cooperative, so we're not for profit. And uh, we cover six counties, technically seven, if you count, you know, one of our large customers above Rome, Georgia. Um, so, we're, yeah, you're right. We're a utility business and we're here to stay. And, you know, my area, we handle, um, you know, communications, marketing, PR, government relations, agribusiness, and uh, key accounts and economic development. So, we work with the state level folks trying to recruit industry. We were fortunate here. to avoid any kind of uh, significant damage up here from Hurricane Michael, but you guys did, just being part of the EMC <coughs> family. I mean, you guys were, I think, helped out by sending some people down there to uh to We did, and, we've, and I've, I've yet to hear if we've got our last cruise back. We had, mm -hmm. um, uh, I know as of Friday, we were bringing uh, a couple of crews back and sending down two more crews and five more trucks. Uh, there was still some work to do uh, down around uh, Mitchell, Irwin, Grady, and those areas. So we've, uh, yeah, and, um, and you know, and, and uh, kind of a, a kudos to, to some of our um, uh, operations guys, construction, you know, Tommy Cook and David Huddleston and those guys. Um, you know, we were actually, Carol was actually able to uh, procure uh, water and resources and fuel. Like we sent about 4,500 gallons of diesel uh, mm -hmm. that we purchased from a local oil uh, company. Uh, we hired drivers, and they let us use their tankers, and we sent trucks down to South Georgia, literally filling up bucket trucks on the side of the road. You guys put together, you and I had talked about this, I think about a month, month and a half ago, you guys had put together a nice little video on the history. It had to do with agriculture, too, in Carroll County, we right? Did. We we're, we're, we're hearing now a lot, a lot about how agriculture is being affected in the South because of that storm, so that's what made me think about it. Absolutely. Tell me about that. Is that documentary available online? Uh, it is actually. If you go to our YouTube page, uh, for and it's search, agriculture in uh, in Carroll County. I guess it, and it kind of talked about. It's, how... uh, it's actually in the region. Um, okay. You know, uh, there was a lot of, of shots taken in Harrelson, Carroll, and Heard counties. Uh, a little bit in Paulding and Polk as well. But uh, it's uh, it doesn't have everything, but it has uh, a lot of industries people just don't think about, from uh, cheese, bees, uh, wine, corn. Um, of course, um, you know, cattle and, and poultry are huge in this area. We're one of the largest. This, this area collectively is the largest cattle producing in the state. People don't realize that. Uh, Carroll County and Harrelson County and uh, Heard County collectively are, are very large in those industries. And it shows how, I mean, just how Carroll EMC got started and how it benefits all of those. Um, a little bit. We, we definitely tie in how, our, um, how agriculture and, and, and farming kind of brought electricity to the rural areas. Um, we highlight that a little bit. We don't go to a lot of detail about our history with the tie singers and the county agents and trying to kind of you know launch that system. Uh, but it is a, it's a great highlight reel for the types of industry that are that are out here that are ag related. Well, they we're going to very... focus on uh, Rotary this morning, and we're going to go ahead and take our first break. Talk about some events they have coming up and uh, some of their efforts here recently. Uh, again, we'll take our first break. We're live on Facebook this morning, News Talk 1330 WLBB. Also streaming live online at Newstalk1330.com, audio only. And uh, on the radio, News Talk 1330 AM and uh, FM 106.3. We'll be back with more after this. At Tanner, we're advancing health throughout West Georgia and East Alabama because we know that exceptional care isn't based on how many patients we serve, but how well we serve them. That's why we're focused on quality delivering the best possible care for our patients. It's why we're expanding our clinical services and building new facilities to serve our growing community. And it's why we're looking beyond our hospitals and medical practices to develop sustainable wellness and preventive health programs in our region. What makes a hospital great has changed. It's not how many beds we have. It's how well we care for the neighbors who need them. Delivering the right care to every patient every time is how Tanner is advancing health with medicine beyond measure. Learn more at Tanner.org or find a physician on our medical staff by calling 770-214-CARE. And welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program brought to you by Tanner Health System. 
Our guest this morning representing um, two of our rotary programs here in Carroll County. On my left, we got Adam Wilkins, president of the Carrollton Rotary, and sitting on my right, former president of the, uh, I'm sorry, Carrollton Dawnbreakers. Dawnbreakers. Is, uh, is Adam and Carrollton Rotary, Jay Gill, uh, representing them this morning. We're going to talk about uh, the recent efforts and some events that they do have coming up in the near future. Uh, you see us on Facebook Live this morning. Derek Newton checking in with a big thumbs up. And uh, also somebody Good commented, there. somebody made a nice comment about uh, Carol EMC as well. And uh, I believe the Dawn Breakers uh, Rotary Facebook page is sharing the uh, Facebook program this morning. So definitely good morning to all of them. Uh, Adam, you and I had talked last week. Um, there was uh, uh, the effort Dawn Breakers actually um, shining a light on polio. And uh, it was an interesting thing to see as you're driving past the courthouse. And I, I guess we can talk about we'll talk about that for sure. But 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 polio, talk about the mission to uh, to end polio with Rotary. So it's been something that they've done pretty much since the beginning, right? Well, yeah, uh, pretty close. And uh, so they they were they were in the thick of it whenever polio was actually a widespread um, issue. And and even now. Um, with it being, I think last year there was 25 cases, something like that, in the, in the world. Um, people stop. They they really quickly. Um, 25 start, cases in the world. In the world. That's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah. It's so it's getting it's a the thing that we always see in Rotary is we're that close, but um, but the the thing that I spoke to you about the other day was a lot of people, especially my generation, unless you just google it or um just go out of your way to find out about polio it's it's kind of a um something that's not talked about a lot and different things like that and one of the things that people stop to realize is um the doctors and the and the people that that treated this stuff back in the day they're either not existent or they don't they're they're, they're no longer here and so a lot of the people that have polio that are still alive and living a perfectly fine life, they have to go a long ways for treatment and um, getting through different situations. So um, still getting awareness out there that polio still is in existence, not the new cases, but polio still is out there. There is an immunization shot, yeah, right? Well, why don't they just talk about the 25 new cases? Why, how did they get it? Why did they get it? It's, it's more in remote, um, in remote countries. I think the 25 cases were only spread over three countries. Mm. Um, and th- don't quote me on those numbers, but um, that's probably pretty close. But um, uh, Rotary still does, um, and I can't remember the initials, but uh, Family Health Days is a is a program that's set up that goes in, actually a local, Alicia Michael was involved with it a lot, and uh, they go into these countries in remote areas and set up tents, and they'll actually do the treatments um, in these countries and people can come in for free and, um, they, it's all volunteer and, uh, it treats, um, for AIDS for, for a lot of different causes, but polio is one of them that they, that they still treat for. And that was something I was going to add to it also is, um, even though you, you think, oh, there's a few cases left, why are we so, you know, um, globally active toward this cause? Um, well, you know, that, that type of disease, we go back and look at, you know, smallpox, AIDS, Ebola, and all these, you know, fast spreading, you know, pandemic type you know, infections, um, polio, as long as it's not fully eradicated, it has a chance to make a full comeback. So we have to stay on top of it until it's fully eradicated and for a period of time. Um, but to Adam's point too, it has also created a network and infrastructure for these other diseases. Uh, we would not have been nearly as effective with the, the Ebola outbreak that happened, what was it, about two or three years ago mm-hmm. when the, some of the doctors here stateside brought it back, got sick, and we were treating it here at the CDC and out in Texas and things like that. Um, that network and infrastructure of the doctors in those tent cities and whatever else in the, in the third world countries and uh, several African nations and they're even, even up in Pakistan and places that we think are, you know, not as third world um, where these cases are happening. And they also created the infrastructure to be able to attack other diseases and to, to try to mitigate the, the spread of those as well. So that, um, that, that groundwork, that infrastructure that's out there is, is pretty, pretty critical to other other types of infectious disease. We talk about Ebola virus. I mean, polio is a virus. It starts out as a virus. So in theory, I mean, something similar. I mean, if somebody were to travel to one of those countries and if they hadn't had the immunization shot, they really could travel and bring it uh, Absolutely. to any place else Absolutely. they go. And, you know, there's some vaccine debate here in the States and mm-hmm. some areas too, and that that's very worrisome, um, you know, um, as long as the pediatric professionals. And I know I'll, I'll probably get some backlash on this, but I'm going to trust the experts. You know, I'm not going to go to – an auto mechanic about a broken knee. So um, uh, as long as long as we have that information and things, you know, we we got to continue to 
to eradicate these diseases, and we have the means to do so. And, and I encourage people that um, I I actually have a neighbor that, that has polio, and, and I learned more in a hour-long conversation with her than I have in being in Rotary for four years. I mean, if, if you ever have the opportunity of talking to somebody that has lived through the stages of polio, um, talk to them. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a very, very humbling thing to be able to talk to somebody that they went through the entire stages of it. And, uh, their, their opinions are completely different than what, than what I ever had. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that, that was very enlightening to be able to talk to somebody off of a, she's not speaking in front of a bunch of people or anything like that. It's just straight asking questions and, and they're, they're open, they're open about it. And so, it, they weren't open about it whenever it first came out, and so now it's a it's it's a very open subject. So it was kind of like a Bill Nordmark, who was a um, very prominent gentleman out of Atlanta. There was a well, very well known Rotarian around the southeast. Uh, passed away recently of, of actually a, a, another cause, but he was he was a uh, polio child and, and had a lot of stories uh, about dealing with it, but had um, a, a kind of a slight paralysis on one side of his body, even as an adult, which a lot of it has um, he's worked through with therapy and things like that, but you could just kind of tell just slightly uh, the damage that it did to his muscle tissue as a child and talks, and talks about the social uh, you know piece of it being picked on and things like that. But uh, he was a, an incredible uh, voice for the for the disease and and, the, the, and for Rotary and our our purpose, uh, unfortunately he passed away recently. And um, uh, but he was a he was absolutely an icon in, in Georgia, very well very well respected, uh, kind of very affluent businessman. We have access here locally. We have uh, pretty instant access to um, a museum that does talk a lot about uh, polio. I mean, it's uh, Warm Springs, mm -hmm. and I'm sure anybody who does know polio, they probably associate it with the uh, former president. Uh, with that, so have you have, have you guys been down there and seen the machines that were used? I mean, this this gigantic tank. I think I can't think what it's called right now, but just a giant tank where people actually, I mean, basically lived in. Right, right. Uh, yeah, it's, was, it's part of the treatment. That's why Roosevelt came to came to Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, literally because of the warm springs to treat his his body and and uh, soak in the in the water, kind of a thing. So, well, the reason I, I did call Adam last week, um, uh, where you guys shine a light on on polio, but broad, or I would say broadcast, but and polio put a big sign, light sign upon the courthouse uh, last week. It was National uh, Polio Day or yep. End Polio Day, World maybe. Polio Day. Yeah, how did that come about? Do you guys, you guys do that every year? I'm assuming we've done it for probably four or five years now, and um, and I'll give a shout out to Case Night Tower. She stood out in the cold <laughs> and bared it for for three or four hours, but. Um, yeah, we basically just projected up on the uh, up on the courthouse, and um, uh, a lot of people drive by there. So um, it just a lot of clubs over the state they do they do similar things, but um, that's kind of been our trademark to uh, to just take a projector out there and put it up there. It's pretty, very easy to do, and the city works with us and allows us, allows us to do it. So. Was the response what you hope when you do something like that? I mean, the, I mean, people are asking questions. Are they just telling you, hey, I saw that? Or you're having that conversation after you put that up? Sometimes and sometimes not. Um, we did have, uh, we, I think we, had th we ended up having three people that responded to our Facebook and, um, and just ask what, what all we do. And, and uh, we had one show up to our meeting last week. So we get a good response. And um, the more than anything, it really says who we are and what we stand for because a lot of people know the name rotary they just don't know what we do mm -hmm. and so um that kind of hits on that a little bit it creates awareness yep we uh we're gonna go to our break here in about three minutes but i know you got some other events coming up and, and yeah, i know you got a scram too as well but let's talk about some events you have coming up in the next couple of months this is for the dawn breakers group so we've got um, most people in the area have heard of casino night um it's been going on for seven or eight years i think and uh well, that'll be happening February 9th, and so it's a ways away. But um, we start we start really pushing our pushing our marketing um, November and December, and we get most of our sponsors by the first of the year. So um, uh, that's our big money maker that we're able to actually give back to a lot of the uh, the causes. But Casino Night, just in a nutshell, it's a fun night. You get to show up, gamble with fake money. And, uh, and win some really cool prizes that are all donated by local businesses. So uh, the, the community really pours into that event in giving away just random things from their businesses. So um, it's, a, it's a fun event. If you haven't ever been, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's, one, it's one of the more entertaining events that you could possibly go to. 
Got about 10 minutes before uh, 9 o'clock, and I have to waste some time here because Steve Graddick has just walked away. He just walked out of the studio. I mean, there's nobody oh. to send us to a commercial break right now. Uh, it, it, some other things that uh, you know, the money you raise from Casino Night, where, where, what's an example of where that would go? So some of the causes that and we did, that's one of the things that it's really cool because each club in Rotary can um, can kind of pick their own, kind of pick their own uh, where the money goes. But um uh, most of our money goes straight back into the community. So we, we support um, CASA, um, community and schools, um, Boys and Girls Club. There's, there's, a, there's a long boy, uh, back to blue fraternal order police, which is where I'm going after this for the golf tournament. Um, if you Chris ever, Cromer. That's Chris yep, Cromer. yep. They, they do so many great things. Um, the police officers do uh, amazing work with the uh, Shop for Cop and uh, – but one of the uh, big events that we do that Dom Breakers is a part of is the Tanner Reed ER program, which um, we kind of support them in the in the fact that we donate around 5,000 books a year to the uh, uh, emergency room. And uh, every kid that goes to Tanner um, in the ER, they get a book, and it's got Rotary's name on the inside and all that kind of stuff. So it's a really cool program that Dr. Fitzgerald started, and um, uh, we – we love being able to uh, to do that every year, and then we've been able to save up some money. And this year, we've actually done a uh, two endowments: one to West Georgia, and one to uh, West Georgia Tech. The one for what to, for West Georgia um, is for um, low income slash maybe somebody that's on their own and uh, they just need a little little help um, to get through. And so um, that's a thousand dollar sponsor or uh, scholarship every year. And then the West Georgia Tech. Um, scholarship is a, I think they call it a, a toolbox scholarship. And basically it's for nurses, for mechanics, for anybody that they they paid for their school, but then they've got all the other supplies that they have to, uh, to purchase that a lot of people forget about. And, uh, and so that one was also a $25,000 endowment that we were oh, able to uh, do. You so, guys will hand that one down the next two weeks or so, right? We've already paid for it. So it'll start, the actual scholarships will start in 2019. Hmm. Um, but yeah, we've already done that. We'll be doing the, uh, the photo op and all that kind of stuff in November. But um, both, both, uh, both colleges have been fantastic to work with and uh, very appreciative of everything. And so, we were so happy that we were able to take the monies that we, the money that we've saved over the years for uh, casino night, um, a little by little, and uh, pour back into the community. So, Adam Wilkins, Jay Gill, representing local uh, Rotary clubs. We'll uh, take our break and let Adam sneak out of here, and we'll reset our cameras so we can focus on Jay Gill for the next uh, eight minutes or so. Nice. Adam, thanks for coming by, no and uh, we'll be back with more community voice after this. At ten, we're advancing health throughout West Georgia and East Alabama because we know that exceptional care isn't based on how many patients we serve, but how well we serve them. That's why we're focused on quality, delivering the best possible care for our patients. It's why we're expanding our clinical services and building new facilities to serve our growing community. And it's why we're looking beyond our hospitals and medical practices to develop sustainable wellness and preventive health programs in our region. What makes a hospital great has changed. It's not how many beds we have. It's how well we care for the neighbors who need them. Delivering the right care to every patient, every time, is how Tanner is advancing health with medicine beyond measure. Learn more at Tanner.org or find a physician on our medical staff by calling 770-214-CARE. All right, welcome back to the WLEB Community Voice Program. Our show brought to you by Tanner Health System here on News Talk 1330 AM, FM 106.3. Also streaming live on Facebook this morning. Good morning to uh, Chara, uh, Tara Chapman over in Harrelson County. She checked in with us oh, as well this boy. morning. And, yeah. uh, fine fine young lady up there. Heavily involved in Harrelson yeah. County. Does a lot yeah, of good stuff over there. Job. You can see now that we're uh, without, uh, we did have two, and one is gone, and we're stuck with Jay Gill, which is which is actually all right. I mean, I, I do enjoy it's talking to Jay thing. Plenty. We can actually get down to the meat now. Well, <laughs> you, <know. laughs> you guys have an effort going on right now. We're going to give away a Jeep. We are. We are. This is the second year we've done this. It's, we call it the, uh, the ragtop raffle, the rotary ragtop raffle. Um, last year we gave away a, um, a Jeep uh, Wrangler Unlimited four-door, kind of tricked out, 
we raised um, about $63,000 um, selling $100 tickets uh, around the community. And uh, so we netted probably around 33 or so, and we put every penny back into our community here uh, last year. So, well, What's an example? Of something uh, well, we did uh, Boys and Girls Club, Communities and Schools, things that we talked about with Adam as mm-hmm. well. Um, but um, we also, uh, one of our, our club's project is Youth Science. Um, it is now a statewide programming for aptitude testing for kids mm-hmm. in high school to kind of figure out a pathway. You know, the strategy right now is, uh, you know, in employment, uh, or, you know, go, going into higher education or going into the military. Um, and uh, so we help kids figure out their pathway, uh, and we have Rotarians that actually go back into schools and help them look at their test results and talk about it from a professional level so they're not just always hearing about it from an academic level. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it, it works. It's, it's been a great program, and, and now it's statewide. Um, and uh, we actually had grant monies last year to help fund it. But, uh, but that's a great program. Um, you know, we do stuff with CASA as well. And this year specifically, uh, we're building a playground for DFACs, uh, for Carroll County DFACs. And um, it's, it's much needed. It, it helps with um, like visitation and days when parents are trying to work back into the to the system that um, they can actually have kind of a um, you know a place to play and, and meet uh, that that's um, comfortable and uh, and accessible. Will it be on the DFAX grounds? My understanding is it'll be behind the facility. Mm-hmm. And, and they um, recently had an extension out there, I think. Right. Yep. So we're. Um, um, you know, uh, we have the raffle this year. It's happening November 13th. Um, the your odds are incredible because we're only printing 800 tickets. Uh, they're $100 a piece. And, uh, and, and the ticket sales are always slow until the last couple of weeks. Um, and so right now your odds are incredible. Uh, we encourage everybody to uh, go find us on Facebook or maybe come to Gratic Communications on Facebook and click the link. I'm sure you all going to post that later. Uh, or you can go to eventbrite.com and, uh, and just um, search Ragtop and you'll find our event. And, um, and we've got people buying tickets from, from all over. Last year our, our furthest uh, purchaser and pr- uh, participant was from Brazil. And uh, so it's, it's neat. It's neat. I'm going to imagine that's going to be more of a donation oh, right. in a way. Yeah, that they, <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to find a way to ship it <laughs> to for ship sure, that. but uh, you never know. Well, Probably a Rotarian. Well, it was, and it's, it's not an old Jeep. I mean, it's not like you, you – No, you know. it's a 2016. It's got about 9,000 miles, hmm. but it's all loaded out. It's got the, the big tires and the you know some equipment to uh, uh, manipulate off-road, big LED panel light on there and, and things like that. Um, we're actually getting the vehicle from uh, Morris Auto Sales, uh, Matt Morris over there. Um, and you can buy tickets, uh, physical you know, tickets you can get uh, at Morris's. You can go to Jill Duncan, State Farm, Office St. Plus. I know that uh, the Morgans had it out there on the uh, South Side BP, yeah. uh, out there past Walmart. Um, I know I'm missing something. Yeah, there was a couple. Oh, more. the Hampton Inn, maybe yeah, Hampton Inn, right? Um, so there's a couple of places you can go, or go just go find us on Facebook, and you can link out and uh, and go purchase a ticket, or find a uh, a Rotary Club member and, and purchase a ticket yourself. Well, we've got about two minutes minutes left in the program. Is there anything? Sure. I mean, is there anything that uh, maybe is coming up else that you want to tell people to look out for? You'd want to just. I mean, do you encourage participation in Rotary? Do we have enough members in Rotary? You know, you never have enough members in any civic club, church, you know, nonprofits and things like that. We we certainly need more people in the community to, to participate. Our club is uh, about 98 members. We're almost 100 uh, members. And then the uh, Dawn Brokers Club is, uh, I think, around, um, you know, maybe 50, 60, 70, somewhere in there. Um, and, uh, but they're both fantastic clubs. We strongly encourage you to check them out. And if you're not, if you're not keen in on Rotary, encourage you to get, you know, get plugged in somewhere, you know, go, go find somewhere to get plugged into because, uh, we do so much for our community. People can't understand when they look, when we look at, at our region on paper and, it, and it's, it's quasi rural and, and, and it's not considered, um, necessarily wealthy, uh, uh, territory. But when you come out here, we have more amenities and more money flying around supporting, uh, causes and things like that than what we show on paper. So so that, which tells you that the quality of life out here is better than – everybody screams quality of life all over the state. But when you really go and put your boots on the ground, you see that this region is incredible. Uh, we do more for people every day, and, and we support people in, in our school systems and, and uh, in business and everywhere else. So. Jay Gill, thanks for participating in our program this morning. Absolutely. And thanks for bringing biscuits, and I appreciate you. Adam all of our time, I guess. Uh, so. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate you setting the trend for other people to come on the show. You know, yes. When you bring biscuits, perhaps they want to be they like Jay Gill. They always bring food. And they will, they, people happy. They should, yes. Rotary Club meets at noon on Tuesdays. Dawn Breakers meets uh, Wednesdays at 730. Both of them are at Sunset Hills Country Club. All right. Again, thanks for coming out this morning. Yes, Thank sir. you for tuning in and watching us on Facebook Live as well. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. Absolutely.